Good morning, Chag Samiach. It is Erev Passover, and we're doing Seder at my mom's house today, but she asked me to bring matzo ball soup. So that's what we're going to do today. When I was in college, um, I decided that I was going to try and do a Seder at our house. Um, I, had, I was newly moved out, and I also really didn't cook. Um, so I did, I did what all good Jewish girls do. I called my grandma and I said, hey, how do I do this? Can I have your recipe? And she said, no. <laughs> uh, B was quite a firecracker and she loved to give me a hard time about cooking things. Um, so we went back and forth for a while talking and I said, you know, come on, can you give me the recipe? No, 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 it's an old family recipe. It's a secret. I can't trust you with it. You don't even cook yet. Um, so this went on for about a good 10 minutes and finally, finally she says, all right, you, you sound committed, so I'll give you the recipe, but you can't, you know, you can't share it. And I said, okay, I, I'm sworn to secrecy, grandma. I'm sworn to secrecy. And so how do I cook this? And she said, well, first you go to the grocery store and you have to buy the right matzo meal. It has to be Manischewitz in the orange and green box. And she was insistent and I was like, okay, I, okay, I'm writing this down, <laughs> I made notes. And um, so she says, go to the grocery store and get the orange and green Manischewitz box. I said, okay, I'll go and I'll get the orange and green Manischewitz box, then what do I do? And she said, hold the box and turn it to the side and there's your recipe totally on brand for my grandma. So uh, I still have the side of the box. And this is the recipe that we're gonna do today. Um, I did find a recipe online that was the same recipe, only they had mathed it out for me because I'm gonna be doing some double batches. Um, so we're gonna follow that, but it's it's the same recipe as on the Manischewitz box. I don't even think they make these boxes anymore. Um, I've got it in a can. Um, I also have some other brands of matzo meal. It really doesn't matter what brand of matzo meal you pick up. It's up to you. They're all pretty much the same. So let's make some food. So this all starts with eggs. Um, we're gonna do a double batch. So we're gonna crack a dozen eggs in here. We're gonna compost these eggshells. So I'm gonna put them in here for the time being. All right, so one. That's gonna to go together with some oil. We're gonna add one whole cup of oil. I'm using a plain canola oil. It doesn't have a flavor. You can use olive oil if you want, but it is gonna impart a little bit of a flavor to that. Ooh, the very end of that canola oil. Whisk that business together. Okay, so there is our eggs and oil. Okay. And then in here, we're gonna add Put the dry ingredients together so that means we're going to need three cups of matzo meal okay that's a half One cup, one and a half, 
two cups, two and a half. Okay. Okay, so there's our three cups of matzo meal. And to that, we're going to add some salt and pepper. So let's get salt and pepper. So three teaspoons of salt. One, two, three. And three quarters of a teaspoon of freshly ground pepper. So one and a half teaspoons of freshly ground pepper. Kind of eyeballing this. Okay, that looks about right. Okay, so mix up our dry ingredients here. I'm using the bottom because the top is still sticky from the egg. All right, we've got our dry ingredients, we've got our wet ingredients couple more things to add to this. We're going to be adding some chicken soup and some seltzer. This is where I deviate from the recipe. I add the seltzer. Um, it makes it a little bit lighter. I like it. All right, we've got our wet ingredients. We've got our dry ingredients. Let's set these aside. I'm going to get some dill put together for us. Let's chop some dill down. Some nice dill here. The recipe doesn't call for an awful lot of it. Let's see how much does this call for. Okay. So the recipe calls for three tablespoons of chopped dill, so six tablespoons. Got some nice fresh dill from the market. Try and mince this up really fine. Um, since it's going in the matzo balls, we don't want any like grubby bits. So in case you're wondering, the dill is not in the recipe on the side of the orange and cream box that they don't make anymore. The dill is an addition um, that I'm looking forward to trying out. I'm going to test drive it on my family. And this is going to go right into our egg mixture over here. Okay. Um, they want you to mix the chicken stock and the seltzer right into it. We're going to add twelve tablespoons altogether of liquid of chicken broth and the water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 50/50 mix. I'm going to do six tablespoons of the chicken stock and six tablespoons of the seltzer. One, five, six. Tablespoons of you. One, two, six. Okay, just gonna give this a good combine. And then it's gonna go right in here into our mock meal with our spices. up real good. Get the lumps out. Alright, 
so what we've got is a pretty soupy mixture and that's okay we want that at this stage um, but you could not possibly form this into balls in the boiling water so what we're gonna do is let this rest in the refrigerator for about two hours give it a chance for the matzo meal to suck up the liquids and when we come back in a couple of hours, this should be a little bit firmer. We'll be able to pop this into our boiling water. Um, so I'm gonna pop this in the fridge and I'll meet you back here in a little while. I'll have the water on and we will get moving on this. Okay, so it's been two hours while our matzo ball has been resting in the fridge. I wanna show you how that rest changed it. Remember how it was so soupy before and everything? Look at this, look at this. It's firm. We'll be able to make little balls out of it. Um, I've got two pots of water boiling on the stove over here. And the reasoning for that is you don't want to crowd your matzo balls when they're in the pot. Otherwise you get really dense matzo balls because they don't expand at all. Okay, so we've got a rolling boil on the water in both of our pots. You can maybe see through here. It's pretty steamy. Um, and I've got my matzo ball mixture and I've got a little cup of water. Um, this is super sticky <laughs> and it's easiest handled if your hands are wet. So I'm going to show you how we make the matzo balls. All right, so there we go. Got my hands nice and wet in my little dish. Pick up some of the mix. We'll roll them in our hands. They're about inch and a half to, well, two-ish inches in diameter. And we're just gonna plop that in there. We should be able to fit most of this in there. <laughs> So we've got all the matzo balls into the pot. Here, let's take a look at these. Um, you can see they're loose in there. So it's really important not to crowd your pot with the matzo balls when they go into boil. Um, they just don't finish cooking in the middle. They get super dense and nobody likes that. Anyway, I'm gonna put the lids on these and set it up to go for 40 minutes and then we'll come back and have a look. See you then. Oh, hey, I forgot to mention, leave the lids on. <laughs> um, don't take the lids off. It just, it does so much better if you keep the lids on and, and don't peek into it. It'll be fine. If it starts to boil over, you can always turn the heat down a little bit. Um, but yeah, leave the lids on as much as you can. I mean, if you must peek, peek, but do it quick. Um, and we're going to let it go. I'll see you in 40. And we're back. It's been 40 minutes. Everybody's been boiling over here and it's time to take the matzo balls out. So let's see what's going on. Got my slotted spoon. Look at this lovely matzo ball. Look at it. Oh my goodness. All right. So let's get these out of here and the pots into the sink and then I'll show you what we got. All right, so you can see we have enough matzo balls for Seder tonight for the seven people that are gonna be there. I'm gonna cover these with some chicken broth to keep them from drying out. Um, so let's see how this came out. I haven't had these with the addition of dill before. Oh, holy cow. That is, that is light and fluffy, y'all. Ooh. Okay. And this is just with the addition of seltzer, so it stays kosher for Passover. All right. That's really, really good. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I'm pleased about what we're bringing tonight. 
So Chag Samiach to you all. Have a lovely Passover and I'll see you soon. Take care.